If you have used the music app on iOS, probably you have seen an animation similar to the one in this video. In this tutorial, we look at how to clone the animation using SwiftUI. In this project, I created a button containing a circle, a pause icon, and a play icon. When I put a comment here, you can see we have the play icon and the pause icon. So in this video, we will animate each of the individual layers using opacity and scale. To do that, we need to define two state variables here. So we have our first state called is playing, which is set to false. Next, we have another state transparency. So these two state variables serve as our initial animation state. When the button is stopped, we set the final animation state. So in the body of the button, we can bring the state variable is playing and toggle the state. Since we have the initial state set to false, if we toggle the state, it will switch from the false state to a true state. The next one is transparency. With this one, we have the initial state set to 0.0. .0. For the final state, we can use, for example, 0 0.6. When the button is untapped, we set the circle's transparency to 0. And after we tap it, we set the transparency to 0 0.6. So this state variable will be used for animating only the circle. And we use the first one, is playing, to animate both the pause icon and the play icon. Let's also hide the circle for a moment by placing a comment here. So we now have the two icons. We want to animate both of them using scale effect and opacity. Let's add scale effect first. Then we bring the state variable is playing and use a ternary conditional operation to switch between the initial state and the final state. A ternary operation evaluates two conditions, true and false. When the condition is true, we will set the value to 1, and when it is false, we will set it to 0. So we bring a question mark here, and the value that appears after the question mark is the true value. Let's put 1. The value that comes last is the false value, so let's put 0. We can now copy the same effect and place on the second icon, which is the play icon, and now both disappear at the same time. Since we want to switch between these two icons, we can swap the values. So here we put 0, and the next one we put 1. If we tap now, we switch between the two icons. Looking at this animation closely, as the play icon switches to the pause icon, we still see it scaling down. That is not what we want. We can make the animation seamless by removing that effect. So we can use opacity to fix that. After the scale effect modifier, we will add opacity. With this, we will use the same ternary operation. So when the condition is true, we will set the value to 1. And when it is false, we set it to 0. Then we can copy the opacity here and paste it on the play icon and swap the values. If we tap now, you can see they all change seamlessly. But we haven't added the animation yet. Let's add the animation modifier. For our animation, we are going to use a spring animation. So we can bring an interpolating spring. We have the interpolating spring that has stiffness and damping. Let's set the stiffness to 170 and the damping to, for example, 15. The value should be the same as the state variable we are using for the animation. So let's put is playing and copy the same animation modifier for the second icon as well. So we now switch the icons with a spring animation. Let's move on to the circle. I'm going to uncomment everything here. What we want to do for the circle is to make it appear and disappear quickly 
by changing its opacity from 0 to 0 0.6. For now, it doesn't disappear at all. To do that, we can go to where we have the final animation state and add with animation. In the parentheses, we can define the animation easing. Let's use ease out with a duration of 0 0.2. Next, we have to define the body of with animation. Once we tap the button, we want the circle to appear and disappear quickly. So what we can do is to set a time, like we want the circle to disappear after two seconds. In order to do that, we are going to use the state variable transparency and dispatch queue. Using a dispatch queue in SwiftUI, we can schedule animation to happen at a point in time. So over here, let's add dispatch queue. So we will put dispatch queue dot main. Let's select the one that is async after deadline. For the deadline, we can set it to now. Next, we will bring a closure and then set the final animation state. So we are going to set the transparency back to zero. So this is how it works. We have the initial state set to zero. And once we tap that, we change the transparency to 0 0.6. After the deadline we define here, we can still change the state. So we put transparency equals 0, 0.0 again. We still don't see any change because we haven't attached the effect to the view. That is the circle over here. So let's add the opacity modifier. Then we bring the state transparency. By tapping the button, we don't see the circle at all. This is because we defined the deadline to happen immediately. So we can make it happen later in time by adding, for example, 0 0.2 second. So whenever we tap the button, you can see the circle also shows and disappears immediately. So this is how to clone the play and pause Apple Music animation using SwiftUI. Thanks for watching this video.